Assalamu alaikum guys, my name is Yusuf, a professional chef and a graduate from culinary school and these days I spend my time teaching people how to cook online. Made Halal is a series brought to Fresh and Grounded where we are taking a look at the food scene through the Halal lens. Today we're looking at a dish that's featured in many different restaurants, it's getting increasingly more popular especially within our community, we are looking at the katsu curry. With this recipe we're only breaking it down into two parts, we're looking at that beautiful curry sauce and that beautifully crispy chicken. In terms of the rice, you can use plain boiled rice, you can use jasmine rice, you can use shop brought rice, or if you want to make it a bit more interesting, why don't you go ahead and try some sushi rice with this. We've got a recipe for that in our sushi video, if you haven't seen it already, go and check the description. If you have seen it already, go and check it anyway because, well, why not? Anyway, katsu curry. Let's get started on the curry first. What I'm going to do is finely chop an onion to start with. All I'm going to do is take the top off, half it, peeling it and making cuts all the way down to the root, making a few horizontal cuts and chopping it nice and fine. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's going to get blended up anyway, but the finer you get it, the easier it is to cook. Next up, we're peeling some ginger. A lot of people try and use a knife when they're peeling ginger and you're left with this sort of like cube of ginger at the end of it, but what we're going to do is use the back of a spoon. This is actually a little kind of tip, it stops you from wasting so much ginger and it's also super simple to do. Just using the back of a spoon to sort of like pull that skin away from it and you are left with a thumb sized piece of ginger which we're just going to grate up and then we have three cloves of garlic which I'm going to peel the easiest way to peel garlic just to chop off that root and crush it with the palm of your hand it just releases that skin so much easier and we're going to finally chop this mix it in with our ginger and onion and then over a medium low heat we're going to heat up a bit of oil and just chuck the load in the pan frying it making sure that it's nice and translucent and soft we're going to add in some turmeric powder and some curry powder the measurements will be down in the description and we're just going to fry this off now I have a little tip that I use when I'm making curries to make sure that the spices have cooked off. If you want to see that, go ahead and check out our Patreon, which is also in the description, and you get to see a bit more of me, some behind the scenes of the stuff that we do. But anyway, after a few minutes, once those spices have really cooked off, I'm going to add in some cashews. Now, this is not essential, but what it really helps to do is give it some body, some creaminess, and a little bit of sweetness as well. Adding cashews in at this point also stops you from having to use flour as a thickener because the cashews will add that kind of creaminess to it, you know? We then need to add in our stock. Now, you can make your stock if you want to, but if you want to kind of like cut corners, like I'm here, you can just use a stock cube. I've just taken a chicken stock cube, put it into a little jug and filled it with 500 mils of boiling water. I'm going to give it a good mix and once it's dissolved, just pouring the whole thing in. I'm going to cook this for a few minutes so that it reduces by about a third. Once this is done, we can add 100 mils of coconut milk, cook it off for a few more minutes and then we're going to put it all into a blender and blend it into a fine sauce. Cool, let's have a taste and see where we're at so far. So there definitely is some sweetness, the saltiness, some heat. But, you know, as it happens so often with cooking, I feel like we've kind of reached a point where we might need to go back and change something slightly. The colour is still a bit too light. So what we might do is fry off some garam masala and some coriander powder. Just add a bit of depth and warmth to it, as well as kind of changing the colour slightly. So we're just going to like fry off those spices separately. But of course, zoom back when I added the turmeric and curry powder. Then add your garam masala there uh, if you want and it'll make it a bit darker, uh, which is like the more traditional kind of katsu curry colour. But yeah, it'll be fine. Um, this is like a little tip on how to save something if it kind of goes off track. We're just going to bring it back on again by frying some spices in, in a bit of oil uh, and it will all be good. So now that our sauce is out of the way, how simple was that? We're just going to move it to one side and we can focus on our chicken and then we're sorted. So once your surface is nice and cleared down, we're going to take a chicken breast, just trim off any excess fat that's on it and just very carefully, you can ask your butcher to do this, but very carefully, I'm just going to kind of work my knife down it, cutting it in half horizontally into two smaller fillets. I'm going to cover the top with cling film and where the kind of thicker parts of the chicken are, you want to take a pan or a mallet or something and just bash it down so it's flat that way it's going to cook nice and evenly if you have any pent-up frustration or something just take it out on the chicken just to kind of get rid of any of that kind of uneven sort of texture just make it nice and flat and once we've done that we can start making our batter very simply i've just gone with equal amounts of plain flour and corn flour whisking that together you can season it with a bit of salt and extra spices if you want and we're going to add water i'm not going to give a measurement for this as such because you just want to add it bit by bit until it kind of forms a sort of thin batter and so now we have a bowl of our batter and next to you want to have a bowl of panko breadcrumbs. You can use normal breadcrumbs if you want, but panko breadcrumbs, as you'll see at the end of this, will just make it so much crispier. You're not going to regret it. Okay, so now what you really want to do here is keep one hand dry and one hand wet. Maybe it's the other way around based on how it was in the video. Anyway, you want to have one hand that's wet at all times. That way it's not going to stick to anything that's dry. Sooner or later, you'll find that your hands end up becoming breadcrumbs and you don't want that. You want it to be all on the chicken. I'm sure you've found this before. The trick here is to use one 
wet hand, one dry hand. So I'm taking my chicken and I'm gonna coat it in that wet batter, putting it into the breadcrumbs and using my dry hand now to take over and coat it in. You can leave it like that if you want, but I wanna make it extra, extra, extra crispy. So what I'm gonna do is put it back into that batter, coat it again, back into the dry, coating it entirely. So now we have double coated it and it's gonna become so unbelievably crispy and the inside is gonna be incredibly juicy. I'm heating up only a few centimeters of oil. You can even shallow fry this if you want. This is sort of a mixture between shallow and deep frying, mid frying, I don't even know if that's a thing. We're just gonna fry this on a medium low heat. You want it to be quite gentle because you want the inside to cook as well. Now that you've bashed it out quite thin, it's gonna cook really nice and evenly and quite quickly as well. I'd say about three minutes on each side, just constantly turning it, making sure it's got nice attention on both sides. And we're just gonna take it out and let it rest on the chopping board for about a minute just to make sure that the inside is fully cooked. And then we can start assembling everything together. Slicing up my chicken and plating it on the rice along with that sauce. And of course, the main question is, how does this thing taste? Bismillah. Alhamdulillah, it really works. You know, you've got the amazing texture of the panko breadcrumbs, which are so crunchy. You probably picked up on the mic. And then you've got the sauce. It all just works really nicely together. It's a very comforting dish. It's fairly simple as well. I absolutely loved it, alhamdulillah. So, yep, it's great.